So now we're going to do this using a more insightful approach. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to recognize that this function has as its parent the square root function, and we're going to use our knowledge of transformations to rewrite, uh, to write down f as a series of transformations starting from the parent function. And then we're going to apply those transformations to the table that we that we made when we were looking at the, at the parent function. And then we're going to use those points and those transformations to get our table for this function. And then we're going to uh, graph it. Okay, let's do that together. So we're going to start with our parent function. I'm going to label the parent function g of x. And we know that the parent function is the square root function. Okay, that's our parent function. Now, what I'm thinking is, aha, there's this x minus 3 inside the square root, right? And I remember that, aha, h of x equals to f of x minus 3. Uh, that corresponds to a horizontal shift. to right by three units. So if I have a function h of x that can be written like this for some other function f, not this f, but an, another function in general, then I can see that h of x is the horizontal translation to the right by three units of the f. So here, what I'm gonna say is, I'm going to translate g by 3 right, okay, by 3 right, okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label that uh, as h1 of x, and it's going to be g of x minus 3, and that's going to equal, well, what is g of x? Well, g takes an input x and outputs the square root of that x. Here, g is taking in x minus 3, and it's going to output the square root of x minus 3. Okay? Okay. So let me, yeah. So in here, we recall that what we were doing was we were saying that uh, for functions h and f, arbitrary functions, that h of x equals to f of x minus c. This is the translation. So here, c assumes positive. This is the translation horizontally by c to right. Right? But aha, I compare my, my f of x, and I compare this, and I see that there's something missing. This is a plus 2 at the end. This does not have a plus 2 at the end. Well, I recall that if I have a function h of x, whatever h is, and I, and I can write it as f of x for some other function plus c, where c is positive, okay, then this corresponds to a vertical shift up by c units. Aha, so what am I going to do here? I'm going to vertically shift upwards by uh, two units. Okay, so I'm going to make another, I'm going to label the next one. Uh, well, since the other one, since the, since the next iteration since the next application of transformations is going to be my f, I'm going to label it my f. So my f of x, finally, is going to be this h1 of x plus c. I mean, in this case, plus 2. Because I'm going to translate this vertically two units up. Then, but what is that? That's g of x minus 3 plus 2. Because what is h1 of x? h1 of x is g of x minus 3. So that's going to be g of x minus 3 plus 2. And what is g of x minus 3? Well, we already saw that g of x minus 3 is the square root of x minus 3. 
So I can rewrite this as f of x equals uh, the square root of x minus 3 plus 2. So what I have just what I have just done here, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention several things here. So we recall that, yeah. Let me let me put that information here. Well, okay, no, I'm gonna do it in a moment. Mm -hmm. So what we did here was we saw we we identified the parent function g of x equals x. We identified that if we translated it three right, we get this intermediate function. And then if we take this intermediate function and we then vertically shift it upwards by two units, we arrive at the expression for f that is that is the expression we were originally given. So we see that the that if we that from the square root function parent fu from the square root parent function, if we translate by three right and we vertically shift upward by two units, then we get our desired function. So now I'm going to recall some facts about our square root function, that the domain is from 0 to infinity, the range is 0 to infinity, and this is my table for my parent function. Now look at this. This is my, this is how I go from the parent to the function we were given. Aha. First, I'm going to find out about the domain. So. Okay. So. I start with the domain of my original of my parent function. If I translate three right, does that affect the x or the y? Aha, if I translate to the right or left, that only changes the x. Translating by three units right, I add three to both sides of this domain. So now my my domain from here after the first transformation would be three comma infinity. Right? Now Vertically shift. Does that change the domain? No, because I'm moving up and down in my y. So this is unchanged. Are there any more transformations to get no to get here? No. So this is my domain of the function that we're given here. So I'm gonna notate that here. So now I'm going to do the same thing, kind of thing with my range. I'm going to see what these what the effect of these transformations are on the range. So starting with g of x, I can see that my range is from 0 to infinity. Now, if I translate by 3 right, does that affect the range? The range is the y. If I translate a function this way, the range is unchanged. Right? So I can put my range is still 0 to infinity here. Oops like this. Now I'm going to vertically shift upwards by two units. Aha! If I'm moving up and the range starts at zero and ends at infinity, then the range will be, all the numbers will be pushed upwards by two. So the range for after this trans transformation is two to infinity. See? Aha! That's how I get the range. What I want you guys to see there is by looking at how the transformation affects the domain and range, uh, we're able to get the range with some insight. Okay. So now I know that my range is 2 to infinity. You see that? Okay. Well, I hope you guys see that. Now I'm going to show you something that I love to show all my students, and that is how I can take the table of my parent function, okay, which I have labeled there for you uh, as xg. Let me copy it here real briefly. And how I perform the transformations one at a time until I get to the until I get to the one that's of interest to us. So now here, I'm going to first perform this transformation. Uh, so the horizontal translation by 3 right. Okay. And so this is going to, by necessity, be x, and this is going to be my h1, my uh, translated. So now, I want, I want to ask you guys a moment. 
if I horizontally shift the graph, does that change the X? Does that change the Y? Does it change both? If I push the function along to the right. Okay. I think all of you have gotten it now. It only changes the X. And how does it change the X? It increases the X by three, right? So the Y doesn't change. If I'm pushing it along to the right, the Y doesn't change at all. So I can just copy that over. But the X changes because they all change by three upwards. So zero plus three is three, one plus three is four, four plus three is seven, nine plus three is 12, 16 plus 3 is 19. Okay. Now, are we at the end? No. We still have to apply the vertical shift. Okay. We're going to vertically shift. Up. By 2 units. And this will actually be the table of our function. And what I want you guys to think now is... Okay, if I apply a vertical shift, does that affect my x or does that affect my y? Okay, imagine the function, the graph of the function, I push it upwards, aha, it only changes the y. How does it change the y? You add 2 to each y value. It doesn't change the x. So we can just copy the x over. 3, 4, 7, 12, and 19. What's 0 plus 2? 2, 1 plus 2, 3, 2 plus, uh, 2 plus 2, 4, 3 plus 2, 5, 4 plus 2, uh, 6, yes, 4 plus 2, 6, yes, and so now I'm going to summarize that table over here because we're going to use it to graph it, and because we don't want to have that in the way of the graph, right? 3, 4, 7, 12, 19, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Yes, exactly. Now, what I want you to do, what I want you to observe here is this. We saw geometrically uh, how this original function that we wanted to evaluate, what, that we want to graph can be seen as a geometric transformation of the original function of the of the parent function g of x equals square root of x. We have just seen that by starting with the domain of the parent function and by applying these transformations to the domain and seeing what the consequence would be in the domain, we were able to get the domain of the function of interest to us. Similarly, we were to able to examine the effects of these transformations on the range of the parent function to evaluate the range of our of the function that is of interest to us. That's a bracket, okay. Okay. And then we were able to see the effect of these transformations on the parent function um, uh, x, y values to get the x, y values of our function. But you might say, David, are these really the values that, that the function would give if we plugged in? Yes. If I take this first row, that corresponds to the point 3, 2. 3 minus, so f of 3 would be 3 minus 3, which would be 0. The square root of 0 is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2, which is exactly what we have here. And of course, you probably have already seen this because you saw the naive approach to the graphing of this problem. And um, now let's draw the graph. Okay. Oh, wait, let me stop one moment. Finally, I want you to see how we went from the table of the parent function and we performed the transformations one by one. So we know that the first transformation was we translate the G with three units, right? That meant that corresponded to an increase in the X coordinates. And so we were able to just increase the X coordinates by three. Then we were able to see that the next transformation was a vertical shift by two units up. So we saw that that only affected the y. So from our intermediate function, we were able to add two to each y value and get the table of our final function. So that meant we were able to apply the geometric transformations 
from our parent table, our parent function value table, to the function value table of this more nasty, uh, all, uh, this one's not nasty, but like this more complicated expression, just by adding and subtracting, and we got a table for the functions of interest to us. Well, anyway, I think it's awesome. And we're going to see a lot of examples like that together. And so I hope that you guys see it awesome as, awesome as well. Okay. Now, we're going to actually graph it. Now, we're not going to graph all the way to x equals 19 because that would take too much room here. But I'm going to graph the x from 3 to 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to graph the x value 3, y2. So I'm going to go x3, y2, right there. x4, y3, right there. x7, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the y is 4, so I'm going to go up 4, let me see here, maybe go right there. Hopefully that would be good. And then 12, x equals 12, y equals 5. So 12, 7. Right there. And again, like, for whatever reason, my graph doesn't come out the way I want it to. Okay. But it should look like this. And uh, with the indicated points. Uh, yes. And uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this example. And uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.